Hello, testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay, so I'm here again. I'm back at it again. Um, Slip Grundy, back at it again with another video. Okay, scratch that. So I got a comment on my last video. And it was kind of like a time-lapse render solid edge blip. But the comment comes in from Rhoda860. And they asked... May I make a question about the render process? Yes, you may. You didn't assign any default material of Keyshot. As I can see, you only assign Pantone colors. How does your model look like metal in this way? My guy, Ski, like, let me tell you straight off the jump, I'm also a rookie. I know nothing about nothing. And so, most of this is like me exploring and figuring things out and this question really made me wonder like why does it look like metal so i really quickly um created this model in solid edge and it's kind of like giving appliance um mug um some sort of holder on, and pour of, of, of liquids. And so um, I'm going to try and test out a couple of things. So I've already got like a decent colorway here. Um, and I'm just going to quickly um, show you the difference between I mean, not applying any sort of like material, which is a standard, very standard, um, what would I call it? A very standard sort of like matte looking plastic maybe. And then if I go to materials and I actually search to apply just any type of basic metal, go to the metal category. Let's see, let's just try this, uh, let's just apply this like aluminum texture. And you may not notice a difference right away as it's uh, denoising or as it's kind of clearing up and focusing in on the image, but you can definitely tell that there's sort of like a, um, a more um, textured, shiny material apply to it okay now we can go down and we can see some other types of metals okay well that's obviously not what I was going for but I mean you can clearly tell that it's like more of a metal material it's got a shiny it's lustrous it's um, more polished, more sleek, and it just looks like metal. So straight off the bat, um, that's the difference between like an actual metal, uh, an actual metal um, material, and just leaving it as a default. Now, why do I choose to leave it as the default? Well, as much as this looks, in my opinion, more realistic, more comparative to like a metal texture is not giving the, the quality of metal that I want it to. So we go back in and say we go to something like a plastic and say I decide to apply a, um, a hard plastic texture, but it's rough. Now, this to me, um, maybe if I change the color, something a little more metal-like. This to me screams plastic. Um, it gives very much uh, water bottle, sort of plastic water bottle kind of vibe. And in a way, this in itself can look like metal. So what I think actually creates the metal look is the amount of lighting that the material receives. 
right now this material is quite um, flat it's matte not a lot of light reflects off of it and that's also due to kind of the structure it's not spherical it's more square so it definitely has more of like a, um, a plasticky feel in that way I find that more metals are um, they have some curvature to it so I go into the lighting and in this section you can kind of like control some various qualities of um, your lighting in your environment and keep in mind I only have like the student edition of Keyshot so my rendering and animation um, you know applications that I can use are very limited so I go into this lighting section and you can see that it's on basic now there are very different presets so performance mode uh, probably gives you a little bit more of a realistic um, you know render of what it might look like there's basic there's product and all of these apply various different amounts of shadow amounts of um, illumination and so on and so forth so I usually leave it on basic but then what I what I tend to do is in the environment lighting I add in the ground illumination now you may not notice the difference right away um, but I will show you again once I add in like an actual light source I usually add in ground illumination in the lighting environment in the environment lighting and then I go in and I add um, global illumination to the general lighting now I'll do the same thing but this time I will um, show you what it looks like when I add it in with a uh, a light source so currently the environment is too bright for a light source so I add in this darker black ceiling environment I then go to environment and I kind of adjust the brightness I bring that down so that's really creating more of like an atmospheric you know quality I might increase the contrast a bit um, then I go into uh, edit and you may not be able to see these extra tabs but you go into edit, you scroll down and there's add light, and then it shows um, another uh, sort of pop out tab and it says area light, I click on that. Likewise, you can do, you can go uh, shift one and that adds in a light source as well. So I add in my light source and as you can see like right away, the quality of the material kind of changes you know um, let me actually move that out of the way though the quality of the material um, is still flat it's got a matte texture it's a bit dull but alone with the lighting and sort of adding in a dynamic uh, you know light source it increases like the quality of the actual texture of the material even though the material is just like a plastic it's just like a hard rough plastic so with this being said um, I then go back into the lighting and I put on ground illumination now watch what happens all of a sudden you get a lot more dynamicism dynamicism all of a sudden you get a lot more of uh, an environmental affect it it feels like the product is in a situation and not just kind of like residing in space and you notice that with the ground illumination it also adds in a lot more um, shadows and textures created by the the product itself now what does this have to do with the material well how we visualize something in space I, I this is what I believe how we visualize something in space um, depicts what like the meaning that we gain from it you know so if I if I if I kind of visualize this as sort of an appliance as something that you might see in a kitchen I think all of my background knowledge, knowledge and um, prior experience of being in a kitchen and working with appliances is going to maybe persuade me to believe that 
the material of this object could be some sort of metal or some sort of hard plastic. Now, what I do as a, render, a renderer is I kind of add to that illusion. So, for example, if I add in maybe more of a global illumination, now all of a sudden, the material starts to take on a little bit more light. You see what I'm saying? So right now, this is a hard, um, rough plastic. But what about like a shiny, hard plastic? So let's apply that. And let's bring the color back to more of like a metal look. Now, it's hard to see in certain areas. Let me get a little closer. In the same way that um, a metal would, you can see that there are certain sections of this render that are illuminating or becoming more lustrous. You see what I'm saying? And I think that if you want to um, give a material the illusion of being more realistic or lifelike or to mimic the materials that are seen in kind of everyday life or whatnot, you have to give it an illusion of being that material. So adding luster, adding um, illumination and sort of manipulating the scene around that object. So going back to the lighting, now what if I um, just decrease this slightly or scale it down a bit? Okay, and then I go back to my scene I kind of create a little bit more of a um, uh, there we go, there we go. Okay, so this is like not great. But I like to sort of, I usually like to have my uh, my models in a bit more of a dynamic pose than just kind of like chilling. Um, and that's usually, like I said, to just add a bit more of visual like stimulus. These areas, a very slight illumination really adds to the quality of the material and I think your job as a render is to bring out those smaller details that really make more of like a larger those nuanced details make the picture like really create the picture of you know what you're kind of going for um, but the key points of what I'm basically trying to get at this are the key points are basically um, you can utilize like different materials in your render um, tools to kind of mimic what materials in real life will look like, but that, that doesn't just stop at taking a material one for one. So metals are going to look metal-like, but that might not be the look that you're going for. And there are very, there are different types of metals. There are matte metals. Um, there are luster metals. There are um, you know, different qualities of metals. And so it's your job to create um, the image that you want the viewer to see. And that usually comes with changing the environment, um, adjusting the brightness, adjusting your light source, adjusting the model so that the light hits it in a way that accentuates its, um, you know, key features. And, um, you're in a really good good position to be like asking really good questions and the answers to those questions are obviously going to vary 
between person, between people that you ask, and between softwares, and between the experience that people have. So that's just my um, personal experience because I'm really not that great at rendering. I'm like fresh off the boat. I'm really trying as well, but I haven't put a lot of effort into it. And your question really kind of inspired me to wonder about how we perceive things and how, you know, working in a digital environment, how our job is to sort of mimic the real real world and how that's like a very fascinating kind of optical illusion that um, are our jobs to kind of take on. And um, I think it's exciting. I think that you can really dive into how we, um, how our prior knowledge of, of how we uh, work with different, you know, appliances and how we manipulate different things can really come in and how everybody's um, render is not going to look the same because they don't perceive the same thing. So very cool question. Really gave me a lot to think about. Anyways, yeah. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching.